North America is on the brink of war. As the United States expands across the continent, war erupts with the Native Americans. Now, the British Empire has been supplying the Native Americans through their Canadian territory to the north. Enough is enough to war. At the Battle of Deadborn, American defenders catch wind of an approaching British army, and they retreat with a scorched earth policy, burning all of the supplies as they go. But these supplies supplies had already been promised to the Native American people, and so they now hunt down the US Army at the Battle of Deadborn with only one thing on their mind. Revenge. Alright, let's see how the Battle of Deadborn does right here. Will this American convoy manage to hold off the Native Americans? It's already turning into a mess. That's one big cannonball right there, but I don't think they've got long. Yeah, look, the Native Americans have just completely swamped the American forces here caught them off guard this is why you don't burn their resources and it looks like we're about to have a historically accurate battle from 1812 with the native americans completely wiping out the american convoy and so we have a total native american victory with all of the american soldiers being slain a battle that the united states will not soon forget at the battle of frenchtown the american forces have managed to capture a british fort and have proceeded to set up defensive positions within the badly damaged fortification. But seemingly out of nowhere, and only four days later, a combined counterattack from British, Canadian, and Native American fighters now descend upon the fort to retake it from the US. Alright, let's see what happens in the Battle of Frenchtown in the Native Americans go. That is one brave boy. First shots coming in right here. We've got a big shot. Ooh! Doesn't actually kill many of them though. We've got more Native Americans going in. Let's see how the Americans, the US soldiers are holding up here. Looks like most of their cannons have just been wiped out here. And on the other side, the exact same thing has also happened. Let's speed things up and look at the British Native American and Canadian advance. we got some British cavalry going in as well as the cannons. And it looks like these guys have been wiped out. The Battle of Frenchtown every bit as bloody as it was in real life so far. And in fact, we've got the Native Americans who are moving up to take out the remaining US soldiers down here, but these US soldiers have now surrendered. They have put up their guns. They have put up their arms. They're no longer in the fight, but that does not matter. The Native Americans have slaughtered them even though they were prisoners. And that is exactly what happened at the Battle of Frenchtown. Native American forces were slaughtering US prisoners of war in their masses and only stopped when British officers told them to. Now, the city of York York, also known as modern day Toronto, has been left relatively undefended by the British. Defending the city, we've got a bunch of regulars, but there's also a worrying amount of militia. And coming off of the back of two straight defeats, the Americans are here, and they are going to be bringing everything they've got to this battle. Will British and Canadian forces hold the city, or could this be a turning point in the War of 1812? Alright, let's begin the battle. Battle of York and see who is going to win. Also, I'm gonna give you a little estimate here. I think everyone's gonna die pretty much straight away. Yeah, and that's pretty much what we're seeing here. Somehow he survived. His horse was yeeted away. This second line over here of regular British infantry has mostly survived. Let's look at the American lines over here as they all reload. Looks like there are quite a few dead Americans, but don't forget the Americans are gonna be throwing everything they've got at this. You can see the US Army is turning up with all its might. We've got reinforcements which will only just be joining the battlefield and these guys are now making short work of the remaining British regulars. And now all we have left is some militia guarding the walls in the city of York and I don't think this is going to be enough. But the Americans are now moving up to breach the wall and I'm not sure how long these guys have left. Let's look at the pile of them moving up the stairs. I'll tell you what though, this cannon could do something pretty spicy. Let's see what this guy's gonna do. Is he going to wipe them all out or is it gonna be a pathetic pea shooter? This is the moment. Oh, it was pathetic. What are you playing at? Now he's gonna get stabbed. The militia here though. Militia taking a few shots. Cannon getting another big shot in there and actually somehow these guys have managed to hold on a little bit longer than I was expecting them to. The flood is about to begin. They are now approaching the top of these walls. The city of York is about to fall to the Americans and here we go. The last militia soldier making his last
last stand. Who's going to reload first? Surely he can't survive this. No, there we go. He did a pretty good job there, but that is a US victory. And what few British survivors remain are now forced to retreat back. Whilst the war of 1812 rages on, another war suddenly erupts further south. The Creek War has begun. Native American forces fall upon Fort Mims with the intention of leaving no survivors behind. Now, there is a small American garrison defending this fort, but the civilians have been trapped inside. And with no way out, the Americans are now fighting for their family. And so the Battle of Fort Mims begins and the Native Americans are going to be piling in. Now, don't forget, they've actually been getting supplied by the British, but also the Spanish, so they actually have quite a lot of muskets, and you can see the immediate damage that that has done. They also have a massive rate of fire advantage and a little bit of an advantage in hand-to-hand -hand combat, seeing as they're not using bayonets. Now, it looks like they've slaughtered all of the garrison out in the front lines, but there are still some more American line soldiers out in the front here and also over here, and they are trying their best to protect the civilians, but will it be enough? Some of the Native Americans are already slipping in. One managed to make it into close quarters combat, but he was actually, in fact, he's still going. He's still going. In fact, the civilians are having to get involved. The civilians just had to put down that Native American. But let's see, the muskets are now making their way in. Are they going to take down these American civilians and all of the population inside? Slowly but surely, they are creeping around the corner and bit by bit. Okay, these civilians are making a last ditch effort to take down these Native Americans. They are throwing their bodies on the line. We've got one brave Native made his way up, actually got taken down by a farmer, which is a pretty rough way to go for him. And it's now pretty much certain these Native Americans are gonna swarm Fort Mims. In fact, actually, it's not that certain. I mean, what's currently happening here is the Americans that were inside this fort are now trying to break out. They know that if they stay, they are going to die. And so the civilians and what is left of the military are all trying to make a run for it. But Fort Mims, these Native Americans, they're slaughtering every last one of them and they have all gone down just like that. That was brutal. The Native Americans took no survivors. They executed everyone and burned down the fort. And again, not something the US is going to forget anytime soon. Now, the Napoleonic Wars have come to an end. British reinforcements have arrived and the British army now sweeps through US territory with the objective to capture and burn the US capital. The only point in time when a foreign power has managed to conquer and hold Washington. Will the British army be able to burn the White House? Well, we're gonna give it a good go. All right, let's begin the battle and just take one look at these defenders. Yeah, that's right. There's quite a lot of Americans up here. In fact, it might actually be a few too many. In fact, I think there's actually more Americans on the battlefield than there are Brits, which is a little bit concerning. And as you can see, the Brits are being drawn drop left, right, and center. The cannons are really not gonna do anything, to be honest. They're basically just artifacts in a battle like that, because let's be honest, they're not getting up these stairs. But the Americans are slowly but surely actually making their way down, but the majority of the Brits are already dead. I'll be interested to see how this battle goes. Will the Brits win or will the Americans manage to hold on to their capital city? I don't know. This could go either way. What just happened to that lad there? God, he just flew through the sky. The Brits have taken this side of Washington here. There's only one or two defenders remaining, but over on the other side, it looks like the Americans have been victorious over here, so this really still could go either way. Is the White House gonna be burned? Will we burn the Capitol building? Well, we're going to find out. The British reinforcements that managed to take the other side are now moving back over to finish off these American soldiers. I'll tell you what, these Americans are dug in really nicely in this little entrenched position here, and the Brits are having a real hard time digging them out. Look at this horrible musket punch up here. Ah, okay. Slowly but surely, the Americans are going down, and this might just be the final American unit, but he slips a shot right there, somehow surviving. This guy's untouchable. How is he not already dead? I'm incredibly confused with what's going on here. The rest of the Brits are just ignoring him. Let's just say this is the Capitol building. The Brits are storming it, ready to burn it. Will these guys, they're not gonna hold it because they got a small head over there. Did you see that? Yeah.
yeah, he goes down. Obviously, he goes down. All right, down he comes and immediately just bayoneted to death by the Brits. Although that guy just had one through his head. That's not how you want to go. Oh, what happened there? Oh, he made his way down. I wasn't watching that. Okay, there we go. The Brits have taken and held Washington, and they're now going to burn it to the ground. Ultimately, there were no winners in the War of 1812, kind of like this battle you're watching right here. But there was certainly a clear loser. Whilst British and American relations improved over time, the Native Americans would never be the same again. All right, that was some totally accurate battle simulation gameplay and that was the war of 1812 if you want to help the channel grow make sure you like and comment down below and if you haven't already subscribed then go do that and click the bell icon too and there's also going to be a link in the top right corner of the screen to my last tabs battle but most importantly thank you for watching i will catch you again next time